So we recently took a look at the Longines Conquest, a modern design that could very well be the best do-it-all Swiss watch for around $1,000. But following that, there were a lot of requests to just look further into the catalog, specifically at the diving-oriented sibling, the Hydro Conquest, to see how it stacks up against other divers in the price range under $2,000. Let's jump in. Before we get into the details of the Hydro Conquest, definitely check out our latest guide looking at 50 of the best dive watches in the industry. It's a long curated list of some great watches that you should definitely be aware of. It could be a great jumping off point for your research. Also, while you're over there, it's in the description down below, check out the new pre-owned offering that we have on teddybaldasar.com. Have a wide variety of different options. All those are hand curated, authenticated, all by our team. And really it's a great way to get into some awesome watches at solid prices. Starting with a brief history on Longines, the brand dates back to 1832, making it one of the most established houses in the international watch industry. Since 1983, Longines has existed underneath the Swatch Group umbrella alongside other iconic brands such as Omega, Hamilton, Tissot, just to name a few. Contextualizing Longines within the industry, the brand is responsible for up to 2 million watches per year and is one of a few brands that have annual revenues eclipsing $1 billion. The Longines collection is also impressively broad, offering a wide variety of model families and variations to suit virtually anyone from the most casual watch wearer to a seasoned enthusiast, all while typically offering a compelling value proposition in the process. Digging into this model family, the name Conquest for Longines actually dates back to 1954 and a 35 millimeter dress watch, believe it or not. Though the modern Conquest I recently reviewed takes on a more everyday stance with a 39 millimeter case, well-finished bracelet, and a remarkably impressive 300 meters of water resistance for its category. This Hydro Conquest offers an even more aquatic option with a larger 41 millimeter case, elapsed time diver's bezel, and a nice supply of loom, making a solid argument as a well-finished modern dive watch in a sea of heritage-inspired reissue style pieces. For the purpose of this review, we'll focus focus on the 41 millimeter gray sunburst style variant on the stainless steel bracelet, but we do also have the on-trend green dial option on a rubber strap for comparison purposes. It's important to note the Hydro Conquest design is actually available in a huge variety of individual references in terms of color, as well as a staggering four different case sizes, including a 39 millimeter variant, a 43 millimeter, a 44, and this mass appealing 41 millimeter variant we're gonna be taking a closer look at here today. Measuring just under 41 millimeters, excluding the crown guards, this size variant should offer a pleasing wearing experience for the vast majority of wrists out there. Though the proportionally long 51.1 millimeter lug to lug metric might find some smaller wristed individuals reaching for the 39 millimeter option instead. In terms of thickness, the Hydro Conquest comes in at 11.7 millimeters, virtually the same measurement found on the non-diving Conquest that also shares the impressive 300 meters of water resistance offered here. Set between the 21 millimeter lugs and Longines does seem to favor odd number lug widths, which which is a bit of a bummer, but we have a bracelet with a pin adjusted three link style pairing polished center links with brushed outer links and tapering to a straightforward stamp 20 millimeter clasp with a folding extension. Our green dial model leans into a textured color matched rubber strap with a different style of clasp that for me feels more premium, but foregoes any type of extension system in the process. Considering the Hydro Conquest dimension set and wearing experience in totality, this watch wears more like a 42 millimeter dive watch with presence enhanced to some degree by the refined level of finishing on display. The majority of the Hydro Conquest case exhibits fine linear brushing that reflects when flashing underneath the light, something you rarely see with a brushing technique, from the simply angled lugs to the near vertical case sides and across the prominent angular crown guards. However, where the watch draws some attention is with the 120 click unidirectional lapse time diver's bezel, here executed with a polished edge showcasing prominent notches as well as a glossy ceramic insert color matched to the primary dial surface. At three, the crown guards keep watch over a polished and signed screw down crown that mimics the standard Conquest design with a groove base and prominent lip at the outermost end. Despite being a defining characteristic of the design, the outer edge of the crown is rather sharp, not to the point where it's gonna hurt you or damage your skin, 
but might cause some discomfort. Set ever so slightly above the top of the sloping bezel, a flat sapphire crystal keeps watch over a dial design adapted from the standard Conquest for a more aquatic use case. Working in tandem with the ceramic bezel along the outside, we have matching dial colors in a sunburst metallic surface, here executed in a gray tone, which varies from an almost black shade to brighter silver, depending on lighting conditions. If you're seeking something that's a bit more muted in terms of reflection, the green dial variant offers a more matte execution. A set of oversized applied Arabic numerals at 12, six and nine o'clock offer a noticeable dose of Explorer DNA and are paired with applied circular hour indices in between. Foregoing the use of a chapter ring, simple printed linear markings denote the minutes with an outline date aperture in the usual three o'clock spot. Dial text is restrained with only the Longines word mark and winged hourglass at noon and a testament to the 300 meter water resistance rating at six. Actual time telling is handled with a distinctive hour hand resembling a slimmed down snowflake design paired with a faceted pencil style minute hand and a simple stick and lollipop sweep seconds. Comparing this piece to the standard Conquest, which either does or does not feature luminescent material, which is kind of strange depending on the dial color, the entire Hydro Conquest collection seems to offer an ample application of the brightly glowing loom on both the dial and hands, shining in a bright blue tone in darker conditions. Overall, this is an effective and legible dial design that allows Longines often higher level of finishing for the price to shine while also differentiating itself from the standard Conquest, enough to help this model stand alone. And turning the Hydro Conquest over, we have a screw down engraved case back, keeping watch over the Longines caliber, the L888 lying underneath. Now, one of the many benefits of Longines' inclusion in the Swatch Group's powerful assembly of brands is a heightened level of access and collaboration with ETA, the Swiss powerhouse when it comes to third-party movement manufacturing. In recent years, Longines has utilized a series of calibers designed and produced by ETA, but specifically supplied only to Longines. So while this range of movements, including this movement here inside the Conquest and Hydro Conquest, can't technically be called in-house, they do offer an elevated sensation of value as well as better spec compared to something like you'll find with the ETA 2824 or the Sleeta SW200. So the L888 is the ETA A31L11, which is itself a modified ETA 2892A2, ETA's slimmer, more upscale alternative to something like the aforementioned 2824. The primary difference compared to ETA's standard 2892 is a reduced beat frequency, altered from a standard 4 hertz or 28,800 vibrations per hour to a slower oscillating 3.5 hertz or 25,200 vibrations per hour, a frequency best known by enthusiasts for Omega's coaxial collection of calibers. In this case, the frequency is utilized to preserve the energy from the mainspring, extending the power reserve here to a capable 72 hours. The other beauty of this movement compared to other offerings from the Swatch Group that commonly utilize a 3 hertz movement, this one is splitting the difference between 3 hertz to 4 hertz and offering the upside of extending the power reserve while still offering a sweep that's going to have negligible differences from four hertz. In terms of unpacking and operation here, we're looking at 25,200 vibrations per hour, 3.5 hertz. It does feature hacking and hand winding, hacking stopping the second hand when you pull the crown to the farthest position and has a power reserve of 72 hours. In terms of testing both of these watches, just anecdotally speaking to them both, uh, we tested them at five different positions. On average, they were running between three to six seconds on average across all those five positions. So pretty good performance out of these movements as well. But now with our overview portion out of the way, let's talk a little bit more about the Hydro Conquest. When speaking about just watches from Longines that are probably overlooked, I was quickly just ready to mention the Conquest as probably the definitive choice in terms of just value. 300 meters of water resistance, there's just a lot going for that watch. But quickly after making that video, People were all about the Hydro Conquest, which I think is pretty, I would say on par in terms of being overlooked. These are more contemporary in their approach. And when you think about Longines, many people are just fascinated with their heritage collection and their archive that is really hard to beat in the world of watchmaking. But the Hydro Conquest in terms of what it's delivering is kind of in a unique light. It's priced around 15 to $1,600, depending on what variant you go for, if it's on the bracelet or not. And that's going to be in a position where I almost find it's in a kind of middle ground for many types of enthusiasts out there. When you look at under $1,000, there's plenty of competition. When you look at $2,000, there's plenty of competition. You're kind of getting to that next tier of dive watch. But why I think the Hydro Conquest is kind of compelling is it offers a lot of just benefit and upside compared to anything below it. But then above it, it's also going to hang with many of the players in that $2,000 range from the likes of Rado, Oris, Zinn, and delivering it with a name on the dial that, although I don't necessarily want to put too much weight on just 
brand equity, it still is something to say to have a Longines. I think it just its reputation in the industry is very tough to beat in the price range at which it occupies. Now, there are a few things to just mention when looking at a watch like this. One is all the Hydro Conquest models wear larger than what the case size indicates. This one's gonna wear closer to a 42 millimeter, and you can basically use that and apply it to all of the different case options out there. The longer lug to lug is going to affect it there and the crown guard system and how that's just going to extend out from the three o'clock position. Also, when looking at that crown guard, this is something I mentioned in the Conquest video as well, is it is a little bit hard to get your finger around it. I mean, it's not necessarily hard to do it. It does extend out quite a bit, but it is a little bit discomforting when you actually get a hold of it because it does have some sharp edges there. The polished center link is going to be more susceptible to scratches compared to something like a brush center link. So that might be a concern for some people out there. And it's also gonna make it kind of wear a little bit even more contemporary and have some more flash, say something like the Oris Aquas as being a nice just comparison to that with a lot of the polish elements on that case as well. But like previously mentioned, the Hydro Conquest is in a unique position. For around $1,600, it kind of splits the difference between a lot of the different offerings. And when I think about $1,500, there aren't as many options that spring to mind as like definitive points of value like it does at $1,000 and $2,000. Most brands typically occupy those price ranges rather than trying to split the difference. And when you compound just the really good finishing on this piece, solid bracelet, although maybe not the best in the price range, still is more than adequate and nicely done. 300 meters of water resistance is more than you'll ever need. Solid loom, a variety of different dial options to choose from and case sizes. And one of the most respected brands in the price category delivering the watch. And I think that's why I got a lot of requests regarding the Hydro Conquest. It's a well-made Swiss dive watch for around $1,600 and it stacks up well against the competition and sits in a range that is going to allow it to really be on its own in terms of the definitive watch for that price category, falling between $1,000 and $2,000. And although it's not perfect and there are some people that are huge proponents of the watch, I still think that this is one that maybe more people need to take a closer look at. But all right guys, that is my take on the Longines Hydro Conquest. What is your thought? on this watch and just this collection as a whole. Love to see those comments down below. If you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Really do appreciate that, and that does help out the channel. Also be sure to check out that definitive guide looking at some of the best dive watches in the industry. And then also definitely check out teddybaldesser.com. We are an authorized dealer of Longines, but also 30 other brands. We offer quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and also offer a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. So if something goes wrong, you're not having to pay for it. And that's you know a nice thing when you're you're starting to buy into a watch and have to deal with servicing and things of that sort. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.